didn't come out. All right, but we also have Kim Michaels that's coming up um, after this segment, and I'm sure he's going to have an amazing message from the Ascended Masters. But right now, let's just jump into um, the discussion of all of the little, the, the primary snares that Lucifer or in your book, Lucifer, or the devil in Napoleon Hill's book, um, uses to prevent people from achieving their goals and their potential in life. So, um, Will, you read the book, and so what are some of the main um, traps that struck you when you were reading the book? Well, um, the main thing that uh, uh, the devil in his book uh, points out, he basically tries to look for where the uh, the mind is being lazy yes. and then he yes. slips in yes. and then he kind of fills in. It's like, if you're not going to think for yourself, I'll, I'll think, think for, for you. you. Excellent. And I'll start filling it in with all the... Uh, the things that benefit the, him. Yeah, <laughs> that, that uh, keep one going in the direction he wants and us he to And he calls go. it drifting. He calls that drifting, right? Yes. That's his main strategy with us is to uh, to get us to drift. And so, uh, what what is drifting? It's it's basically. Um, let's see. I think he, he calls it a lack of definite purpose. Yeah, it's laziness plus indifference plus procrastination. procrastination. A anything that keeps you off task and off purpose. Right. And um, he was, you know, the point that you made earlier, um, I remember my mother used to say, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's a big problem with a lot of the young people mm -hmm. is there's too much idle time, and then they fill it up with things that actually don't benefit him, mm -hmm. them and don't help them grow. Yeah, that's right. And achieve their goals. And then they wonder, you know, why... I'm not any further along yeah. than I am on the path. And in this uh, in this book, um, laziness is uh, basically not thinking for yourself. That's I mean, so that's true the, because uh, you're abdicating responsibility um, for figuring things out, and parents encourage that by right. you know telling kids what to do all the time and making everything so structured. And then he talks about how the educational system um, actually exacerbates it, mm -hmm. as do most of the uh, religious institutions, right. um, by not by instilling fear mm -hmm. and by not teaching kids practical things that they can use in their everyday life and just having them memorize things. Right. Yeah, actually, he took a big chance. Uh, this was written back in the 30s. Right. But he took on... You know, the two major on, institutions. The two major institutions. He took on, took on the church. He took on the educational system. You know, very courageous. Well, and you know, what I notice with your book and mm -hmm. with his book is the voice mm -hmm. that he uses for the devil right. is very similar to the voice that your Lucifer has mm -hmm. and that he's brutally honest and, and very, very candid. Mm -hmm. um, when you ask him a question, he it's like you wouldn't expect him to just, you know, spill out his secrets. He's reluctant, mm -hmm. you know, if it's something that's really going to hurt his game. Right. But I love the candor in, in your book and in his book mm -hmm. about how he traps people. Yeah, and uh, that's the nature of uh, of that of that dark side, the 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 devil or the uh, ego or Lucifer. Yeah, whatever, you whatever call we it. want to call it. It um, you know it 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 just pulls no punches and tells it like it is. Well, and and essentially, what would you say is um, from your perspective is the purpose of this dark side? Um, well, in, in terms of the game. Yeah. See, I, the way its I goal. What is its goal? Uh, the way I understand it. Um, you can't have light without a shadow. Especially in do in a system like ours where it's duality. Yes. So um, he's basically holding up his end of the game, you know? <laughs> and, and you know what was really um, fascinating is he said that 
what he calls, you know, the lighter God, his opponent. Right. And he said his opponent doesn't bribe people, and he's very good at bribing oh, yeah. people by dangling carrots oh, of yeah. things that they really want. And that's how he's able to ensnare, he says, 98% of the population. Right. What are your thoughts about that number back in the 30s versus today, where he says, you know, there's only 2% of the population that's out of his uh, reach or out of his grasp? and he spends a lot of time, like in your book, on focusing on that 2%. So yeah, what do you think I, about the percentages today uh, from I, the 1930s? I think it's changed. Okay. I think that things are better now. I, I think that... Uh, when and he, in what way? Give me an example. Well, uh, when he wrote his book, um, he basically was focusing on uh, the... Uh, definite with your thinking. It was mm -hmm. a lot about your thought. Right. right. Get clear on your thought. Get clear on, on what you want in life. And I think what the big shift that I've seen is that on a, on a spiritual level, yeah. there's been more an, an awareness of a, a kind of an a waking up. Of what? Of one's consciousness. Like to... to so, uh, so you're saying that, that more people are aware of how their thoughts affect their reality and, and co-create their reality? I'm, I'm saying that there's more uh, presence. There's, there's more a sense of uh, I'm uh, like snapping out of it. You know, I'm awake. So you're saying more people are waking up? I think so. That, that was well, something I, I, that I would agree, you know, that yeah. uh, and... It definitely gives me hope that yeah. more people are waking up. Um, but at the same time, you know, as you show in your book, Lucifer is stepping up his game. As right. more people are waking up, he gets more sophisticated right. in the little traps that no, he comes right. up with. That's exactly right. So, yeah, I would agree that more people are waking up. But at the same time, that 98% versus the 2%, um, I, I don't think that there's a huge difference mm -hmm. in, in the numbers of people that are really out of his grasp. Right. And I think it's dangerous for people on the spiritual path to get into this mindset of, oh, you know, I don't have any ego. I've got yeah. my ego under control. Right, good luck. And I have arrived, yeah. and, and I'm safe, you right. know, from uh, any of the, the tricks. Because yeah. the ego is very, very crafty. Oh, it's unbelievable. And uh, just when you think you have extracted yourself from it, you know. It comes up with new and improved ways oh, yeah. to, to test you. Yeah. And, well, I mean, I personally think that on this journey, okay, Napoleon Hill talks about um, anger. Mm -hmm. And he talks about the inability to bounce back, mm -hmm. you know, from the setbacks in life. And that, um, and Kim Michaels always talks about how discouragement is the, the sharpest tool in the devil's, you know, toolkit. And, yeah. and, and that you know, is used a lot. If you look at the world and the war and the poverty and the economics and all that, it's enough to depress anybody. Um, and so I think on the spiritual path, we really need to focus on the solutions mm -hmm. to these problems versus, oh, I'm so caught up, you know, in the problem and feeling powerless over the problem. Oh, well, yes. You know, um that's right. It, it's uh, jumping in and doing something. And what, what would you recommend? Well, uh, when it comes to... Uh, S solutions. Uh, like with one's anger? Yes. Let, let's use that. Yeah. So I think that uh, the main thing is... Uh, to like get to the root of things, like you know, w what am I angry about? And right? and you talk about the the shadow work. That's a part of the shadow work, right? Yeah, I I feel that um, the biggest thing that that we can do is to um, and it, it's like to me, it's the one trap mm -hmm. that I have seen on the spiritual path for most of us. It's that we're drawn to the light filled virtues of mm -hmm. spirituality. Integrity, love, uh, generosity. And, you know, and those all are beautiful those. goals. They're wonderful goals. Yeah, and They're we very should. necessary. And we should. But what we tend to do is then. Uh, Ignore ha completely the, ignore all our deficits whole and, and half our of shortcomings it that we pushed down and away, right? Yeah. And we've rejected. So, so you're saying um, when you get angry in that moment, take a time, take a moment to look at that and ask, "Am I really angry with that person 
or is this a trigger from something else in my past? Right. And am I reacting? Yeah. Because reactiveness, I think, is um, a real trap. Right. Uh, for people and you know like Don Miguel Ruiz's The Four Agreements where he says you know we make too many assumptions right. and and when you assume something you're going to jump to a wrong conclusion and we take things so personal mm -hmm. so I think one solution would be to not take anything personal and to look at other people's stuff you know that triggers you and go well, I don't have to react to it. Right. You know, and that's just, and I've been able to distinguish between whether it's their stuff or my stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's very helpful. Yeah, that would be uh, a really good way to go. Well, and in terms of, uh, I really love the fact that he got into improper diet. I, mm -hmm. I was blown away that in 1938 <laughs> he was talking about um, uh, improper food combining, mm -hmm. uh, overindulgence of mm -hmm. rich foods, and something that I'm really big on is detoxing, you know, mm -hmm. cleaning out, <laughs> I forget what he calls your, uh, uh, he has a cute little term for it, but literally he's talking about the need for colonics and, and enemas and how all yeah. of that congests the mind. Right. And a lot of people on the spiritual path, have you noticed that, and I've noticed that the higher up they get on the spiritual path, it's almost like they forget about their body and, and the importance of it being your vehicle right. for enlightenment. And the body's our temple. Exactly. Um, and I think that um, as, as we begin to uh, evolve, uh, that it's so important to take the body along to, uh, to treat it as the temple that it is. Well, and, and in this actual um, stage of our journey, um, that's one of our responsibilities is to, you know, take the body with us on this journey rather than um, literally treat it like a garbage dump and, right. and say, oh, the body really isn't important. All that's important is the mind and yeah. the spirit. And I think that we need this balance. Well, I think to me, um, I mean, what is spirituality? Uh, in my view, a lot, to some degree, it's embodying mm -hmm. one's, uh, one's being. Yeah. It's not like and, and we're not, not just pure. one thing. Yes. You know, we we have a physical body, an emotional body, a mental body, and a spiritual body that is our identity. That's our true identity. Right. And if we can balance, <laughs> yeah, all those of those together, right. that's the journey. Yeah. And so I think that one of the goals of the ego, from my experience, has mm -hmm. been to prevent you from integrating yourself and becoming whole, because the ego wants to be in control right. and it wants to run everything. And if you get to the point, like Napoleon Hill says, where you think for yourself, mm -hmm. well, what do you need your ego for? Right. <laughs> your ego is not, you know, misleading you and pointing you in the wrong direction. Right. And it defends itself. Absolutely. And right. very, does a very good job. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually notice and I pay attention when people are defensive mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, so why are you defending uh, an idiot? Your ego literally is an idiot right. and, and you're defending it. Yeah. And I think we really need to take a look at our defense mechanisms. Mm -hmm. You're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I'm your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant, and in studio we have Will Snyder from um, www luciferscame.com and he is the author of Lucifer's Game and we're discussing Napoleon Hill's book and how you can outwit the devil and his book, how you can evolve higher on the spiritual path. We'll be back with Kim Michaels after commercial break with our message from the Ascended Masters. Hi folks, this is Larry Minetti, and many of you out there suffer from skin problems. Well, I've been telling you for months how to solve that problem. It's called Herpanacin. It's the most unique and effective formula on the market. It cleans your skin from the inside out. It gets rid of all kinds of acne on your back, your neck, your face, so you can feel and you could look like a movie star. Herpanacin is a natural supplement. It was created by Dr. Wayne Diamond and his staff, and trust me, this really works. I've been on these supplements for over a year now and never had a problem. There is no reason in the world to wake up and be afraid to look in the mirror. You trust Larry. Just try it. 
Call 888-467-4200. 888-467-4200. Are you worried about losing your home to foreclosure? If you've been threatened with foreclosure or receive legal papers from your bank, you have approximately 30 days to respond. If you do not respond, you could lose your home. You have rights. Act now to protect your rights. You can stay in your home. Many times you can even modify your loan. The bottom line is you can get past this, but you must act right now. If you've been served by your bank and you're worried about losing your home to foreclosure, now is the time to fight back and save your home. Time is limited, so call the professionals at National Foreclosure Defense right now. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. 800-515-6309. That number again is 800-515-6309. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Mm -hmm. They found me a place for which she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now... Very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-471-5173, 800-471-5173. Back with um, Kim Michaels and his message from the Ascended Masters. Uh, welcome, Kim Michaels. Thank you. I am the Ascended Master, Mother Mary, and I would like to comment on the topic of today's show, namely the shadow or the devil. Hmm. L- let me begin with a saying that you cannot have light without a shadow. But my beloved, is that statement universally true? Are there any shadows in the sun? Are there any shadows in the ascended realm? There is not. So why are there shadows on earth? What is it that creates a shadow? It is something that has solidity so that the light cannot penetrate. This means that if you are looking at it from the outside, you cannot see what is behind that solid wall. And this is how the minds of most people on earth are. Your shadow was born out of your desire to hide something, to hide what is going on inside your own mind. In the beginning, you wanted to hide this from your spiritual teacher, as we have described in several books given through this messenger. But you also have developed a desire to hide what is going on in your mind from other people. Now, my beloved, there is nothing inherently wrong with going through this experience. It is part of free will that you experiment they with having your mind in Christmas. be closed to having others look into it. But it should only be a phase. And for most people on earth, it has become a trap, a prison. And the reason for this, my beloved, is very, very simple. You cannot hide what is going on inside your mind from other people or the teacher without hiding it from your own conscious mind. <clears throat> and if you do not see with your conscious mind what is going on in your subconscious mind, you cannot free yourself from it. This should be very simple logic. What does it take to ascend, my beloved? It does not take some magical ability. It does not take the help of a magical teacher. It takes only one thing, a willingness to look at absolutely everything in your own subconscious mind. 
those of us who have ascended have ascended because after suffering for lifetimes on earth we finally came to the point where we said now I am willing to look at everything in my mind and when we then did look at everything and dismissed all parts of our own shadow all parts of our own ego then we became invulnerable to the planetary the collective force that you often call the devil the devil was not created by God the devil has no cosmic necessity there is no need for a devil but there is a temporary need for those who want to hide because the devil serves as a justification for continuing to hide something from God, from the spiritual teacher, from other people. So in a sense, the devil is doing you a favor. He is helping you do what you say you want, namely having the perfect excuse for not looking into the abyss of your own subconscious mind. But of course, there is a price to be paid. The devil wants to be paid by getting your energy and your attention. And so when you get to the point where you have had enough of this, that is when you become open to the reality that you actually cannot get yourself out of your own ego and shadow without having a frame of reference that is beyond the shadow because it is completely made of light. And that is where we of the Ascended Masters can help you because we are, of course, only light. And therefore, we can and we will give you that frame of reference. We have given it through many of our books and teachings. But as you apply these books and teachings and the tools we have given, we can give it to you personally as well. And I desire to see all of you get to that point where... You can hear me inside your own mind because you are no longer hearing your own shadow. Wow. That's oh, great. my goodness. That was powerful. Yeah, Thank beautiful. you, Kim. And that was so on the money. Yeah, so great. we will be um, discussing that after commercial break. Thank you, Mother Mary. Thank you, Kim Michaels. Mm -hmm. And we actually got Jose. So he's going to be doing the reading for the day. And he's going to be doing a short one for you, Will. Oh, great. Um, so we'll be back after commercial break. You can check out Kim Michaels' work at TranscendenceToolbox.com. Mm -hmm. He has over 40 books. And uh, his books on the ego, I cannot recommend them enough. Mm -hmm. Um, I am your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant, and in studio is Will Snyder from Lucifer'sGame.com. Got a lot on your to-do list? Now, during Kubota's Power To Do Great Things sales event, get a great deal on an L3301 or 3901 tractor with a live, continuous-running rear PTO. Now, get financing as low as 0% APR for up to five years, and great customer instant rebates when you buy a new L3301 or 3901 and two implements. Now through December 31st, 2015. Call toll-free 1-888-465-8268 for details about cost and terms. For more information or to find a participating dealer, visit Kubota.com. The Doug Steffen Good Day program, early morning radio, and I guess it is radio, although it's radio on TV because this is CRN Digital Talk. You can find out what's going on in the world. We talk about the issues of the day, the events of the day, the people that people are talking about. We have an interesting way of looking at the news and having a little fun with the issues. So if you want to have some fun, learn a few things, and get up on the right side of the world, Doug Steffen's Good Day program, weekday mornings, 2 to 7 a.m. on CRN Digital Talk. CRN travelers relax at the beautiful Found Grove Inn and Conference Center in Santa Rosa, California. Come to quality and come to luxury. Experience the newly renovated guest rooms. They're generously sized and they're decorated in the Tuscan tradition. They have great, incredible pillow top mattresses, luxurious linens, and down fill comforters. The Found Grove Inn also offers complimentary Wi Fi and internet access. There's warm cookies and coffee every evening in the hotel lobby, and you can visit the newly remodeled Equus Restaurant and Equus Lounge with its new wine bar. It's the ideal place to relax and enjoy a glass of wine and watch our What's Cooking on Wine show on CRN with host Larry Van Alst on Wednesdays. It's the Fountain Grove Inn Hotel and Conference Center located in the heart of Sonoma Wine Country. 
It's easily located in Santa Rosa off the 101 Fountain Grove Parkway exit. Call 707-578-6101. That's 707-578-6101 or visit FountainGroveInn.com. What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free, and your donation is tax deductible. Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a non organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now. 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now. 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. You order a glass of your favorite Cabernet, fresh asparagus, hollandaise on the side, a filet, medium rare. You unfurl your napkin with a flare, close your eyes, and prepare to listen. Ah, there it is. The sweet music you long to hear. The sizzle. The sizzle of a Ruth's Chris steak. The most magnificent corn-fed prime beef, broiled to perfection at 1,800 degrees. Some call it a sizzle. We call it an anthem. As the waiter approaches, you think, is this one mine or that one? Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Like Ruth always said, life's too short to eat anywhere else. Make a reservation online at rootschris.com or by calling 800-544-0808. Okay, we're back. Continuing this discussion about how you can outwit the devil. We just had a really powerful dictation from Mother Mary um, giving us some incredible insight on the shadow side and I was really blown away when she said that we created the shadow um, part of ourselves so that we could hide and I totally resonate with that and I can see that and a big part of what you talk about in your book is the importance of not stuffing that shadow side of yourself and not hiding from the shadow, but facing it um, as the key to escaping from Lucifer's um, snare. Yeah. Basically, um, you really can't reach any kind of inner equilibrium without looking at what we have buried and rejected. Exactly. You know, the and shadow is the storehouse of all the stuff we, we've just pushed well, you, away. Well, you called it, um, instead of us reaching wholeness, we actually reach halfness. And I'm going right. to let you explain that in a second. Um, but what I think is, is really important to acknowledge is the fact that today, the like the taboo used to be don't talk about sex. Right. But today... The real taboo is don't talk about your darkness um, in the spiritual movement. Mm -hmm. And when you do start to talk about it, it makes people who are on the spiritual path, you know, very upset mm -hmm. or very much afraid or they start pointing their finger at you and saying, well, you're feeding the darkness by acknowledging it and all you have to do is just pretend that it's not there. Essentially, right. that's what they're saying. Yeah. Um, but would you explain what you, what you mean in the book about reaching, you know, halfness versus oh, wholeness? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the idea of, of evolving is to reach a place of wholeness, right? Yes. And so if all you're doing is chasing the light then and, and refusing to, refusing look, at your to shadow. look at all that energy that's that's underground or pretending you don't have it <laughs> right especially <laughs> pretending you don't have it yes then you know uh, that's what lucifer says in the in the book that uh, you know you're kidding yourself you're basically reaching halfness not wholeness exactly right. you you have a wonderful quote at the beginning of one of your chapters from george uh was it santiana 
I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last mm. name right, um, where it says um, it is a revenge the devil sometimes takes upon the virtuous that he entraps them by the force of the very passion they have suppressed and think themselves superior to. <laughs> wow. That's exactly what we're talking about, right? Right? Yeah. And that, I find it so common after people reach a certain level yeah. on the spiritual path, and then they just, it's like a glass ceiling. Yeah. They don't go any further. And as you said, it's because they're unwilling to look at the shadow. And then the other um, quote you have is by Chris uh Jamie, mm -hmm. and he says to share your weakness is to make yourself vulnerable, and to make yourself vulnerable is to show your strength. Right. And I think for men, that's really hard. That's huge. Yeah. You know, because patriarchy says men, you got to be strong, right. and if you're vulnerable, if you show your vulnerability, then you're you're really not a man, and right. you're weak. And that's one of the traps that I think that the male consciousness has to overcome. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's really in uh, our being able to be vulnerable that vulnerability opens us up, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and which is, it, it, one has to come from, a, it, it opens up a place of strength. To be vulnerable is to actually be standing in strength. It takes strength to be able to hold that ground. And I think young men need to be taught that. Absolutely. You know, I, I think that's um, a responsibility on the part of older yeah. men to step up to the plate and um, mentor some of these young guys and just take them in, you yeah. know, like as a son. Yes. Um, so many of them are lost and they need that um, strength and, and they need someone who, to serve as a role model. Yeah, and someone to show them that, to be vulnerable is a, a, is a place of power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, in the book, you, what I was really fascinated with in your book yeah. um, is the Lucifer's interest in technology. Yeah. And he says that on the one hand, um, he it, it helps him mm -hmm. with his game by distracting us from what's right in front of us. And you see that a lot with people getting caught up on the Internet and all of these frivolous games and chat rooms and, and things that are just absolutely meaningless and nonsense. But on the other hand, uh, Lucifer <laughs> is disturbed about how it can bring people together in massive numbers. Right. And that's what I've used Facebook for mm -hmm. and social media for <clears throat> to awake uh, consciousness and to um, encourage people to come together mm -hmm. and address the dark side right. of the planet right. and the dark side of ourselves. So I do see both sides, yeah. you know, of the technology. Yeah, and uh, what he's referring to in the story is that, uh, you know, my Lucifer in this book is his main interest is to keep us unconscious to keep us in what he calls a waking sleep so mm -hmm. he's delighted that we're all walking around staring into our cell phones and distracted uh -huh. in this you know various ways uh, on the other hand um, it's an, a new wild card for him uh, this ability like Twitter and these you to know, come for together. huge groups of people to gather it's like uh, and and it's it's certainly creating problems for repressive governments around the world oh, yeah you know including our own government who is spying on us um, yeah. you, you have to think that they must be pretty threatened mm -hmm. you know to come up with this whole network for NSA to be able to spy on everybody right. via their cell phones via their um, the internet yeah. um, and um, television. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. a, and, and everywhere you go, there are these cameras mm -hmm. that, you know, it, and I was, listen, <laughs> I was listening to that song this morning. I'll be watching you every step you take, yeah, yeah, every, yeah. you know, breath every you take. Every move you make. Yeah, every move yeah. you make. I'll be watching you. And I was like, oh, my God, George Orwell's yeah. 1984 yeah, has so come true. And I was warning students, you know, uh, two decades ago that this was coming. Yeah. And nobody believed it's me. And I'm looking around yeah. and I'm going, oh, my God, there is nowhere to go. Yeah. nowhere to hide yeah. they're watching you but the only reason they would be is they're feeling threatened and there's that need to control yeah. so would you say that in terms of Lucifer's game that one of his big issues is he wants to control everything yeah uh, basically what he's interested in is if everyone 
is walking around in what he calls a kind of a waking sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's true. Yeah. Like robots. Right. Then uh, that then everything takes care of itself. Absolutely. We're just playing. Because you are an automatic pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And here's a quote from your book where um, I love how candid he is. He says, "My main focus is not to keep you small. Um, Do I tempt and distract you? Yes." But you keep yourself small. Remember, my focus is keeping the shadow world alive and well. It's not my fault that the human tendency is to take their darkness and, uh, via denial, bury it alive rather than deal with it consciously. And that's exactly what Mother Mary was saying. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. That's a perfect. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, you really, really tapped in with this book. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when I read it, I was like, whoa, okay, okay. because I had already read Napoleon Hill's work. Mm-hmm. And I was literally um, very disappointed that the book was suppressed all of those years because Hill's book, Hill's yeah. book was yeah. suppressed all those years because I knew he was right yeah. when uh, the devil said in his book that. In one generation, if the people read that book Mm -hmm. and followed, you know, Mm -hmm. the uh, master, you know, um, the tricks Mm -hmm. of of the devil, that in one generation you could, he could, he would lose his grip on everything. Quantum shift. And and I was at a workshop this weekend with Jose Munoz, um, who's on the show, and he was pointing out how fast we can turn things around in terms of the transition Mm -hmm. into the golden age. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of us making that decision and coming together in small groups, you know, because it has a ripple effect. It, it, it doesn't take a large group. An amazing amount of power can can spark out of a small group. Absolutely. It has yeah. always been a small number. And, yeah. and a lot of us who are on this path of waking people up, it's easy to get discouraged mm-hmm. and say, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> that you look at all these zombies and they're just they're refusing to wake up. Yeah. And I have a lot of empathy for the people that are asleep when you consider the poisons in the air, the chemtrails are, are spraying neurotoxins. Oh, yeah. The water has fluoride that dumbs you down. And the media. And the food. The, you know, and the the media, yeah, the propaganda, right. it's like poor people don't even have a chance. So I, I just feel like it's an obligation of, the, of those of us who are awake in spite of, you know, right. all of the obstacles that we have to keep talking about it. Like yeah. discussions that you and I are having, right. you know, on this show are so important mm-hmm. to just put it out in the um, quantum field. Right. Yeah. And that comes back to my point about uh being willing to look at uh, our shadow side, yes, you know, but with with a sense of curiosity, yes, and, and not, not fear. Not, and, and you know. the, it's the fear of it and the shame. Yeah. Instead of being ashamed of things that you did, I think if we can develop some compassion for ourselves and say, well, you know what? Yes, I did that, you, but. At that time, I thought it was the right thing to do, or I didn't have all the information. I didn't know any better. I gave in to my weakness. Whatever. Whatever. Just own it. Yeah, you know? Own it and forgive it. But it's it. not who you are now. Exactly. It, it doesn't define your right. reality today. Right. You can look at it, and I think the whole purpose of all of this is to just learn from it mm-hmm. and go, you know, wow, that hurt. That doesn't yeah. feel good. So right. I don't want that anymore. And we can disown it. That's right. Uh, well, maybe that's not the right word, but we don't have to embrace it. Yeah, and we can transcend it. Transcend it. Yeah. That, that's the right word. And, and free up all that energy. Totally. <laughs> all that energy that it takes to try to keep all that down. That's a lot of energy oh, I think about. Kidding. When I think about people who manipulate yeah. and try to control everybody else, yeah. and yeah. it's it's like chasing the wind, right. you know, because you're not going to contain the wind. You yeah. can't control other people because you can't even control yourself, right. you know. And I just think, wow, if you took that energy and put that into yourself yep. and freeing yourself of this need of thinking you can control yeah, right. anything, you'd be so powerful, right. and but beyond belief. But the 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 the, the trick that Lucifer actually uh, reveals in Lucifer's game is that if you can stand in between the light and the shadow. Yes. 
and hold the two together. That's the Dow, you know, the middle. The, yeah. the, that's the way. It's like, okay, I own this, yeah. I own that, I own both sides. Yeah. Th then that's a balance and a sense of equilibrium. And in and of itself. Can, yeah. And then you can then, I think, as Mother Mary was saying, you know, they've tra the Ascended Masters have transcended the darkness and there is no shadow because they were willing to do the work. Right. I thought that was very powerful exactly. in the dictation where she said, you know, they came back many, many lifetimes yeah. and decided enough of this already. Yeah. I'm willing to do what it takes, you know, not to be caught in this trap. Yeah. And I think many, many of us on the spiritual spiritual path have gotten to that place. I know certainly I've gotten there mm -hmm. and I'm willing to look at whatever it takes, no yeah. matter how painful it is right. and um, accept it and say, okay, now I'm ready to move out of this. That's right. And That's I know it sounds simplistic, you know, and it's not <laughs> as easy as I'm making it sound, but it just takes a willingness. It takes willingness. It takes courage. It takes a sense of, uh, Curiosity, yes. you know, and willing to grow. We, we, fearlessness. We outgrow things. Yeah, and, and leaving things it, huh? behind. Yeah, you know, we, fearlessness. Yeah, right. we, we, we get attached to, right. you know, images of ourselves yeah. and ideals of ourselves. But there's another quote from your book that yeah, I thought was really hear. cool where um, you, you, your character is pointing out, well, what about the sleepy reality that you create for us, Lucifer? And he says, ha, you think I'm creating that? Hardly. Get this straight. I don't create anything. I'm not an originator. I'm a facilitator. <laughs> There's a world of difference there. Yeah. I didn't create this foggy state of consciousness the human race finds itself in, and I don't originate action to force the hand of man. I'm a sheeple herder. I simply guide you along. I facilitate the direction your precious ego always seems to want to go. Is the candle to blame that the moth uh, flies into its flame. That was beautiful. And and it's so absolutely true. And I was discussing this with one of my uh, former students last night mm. about how when we wake up to the fact that this is just a game right. and, you know, or, or what Shakespeare said, the whole world is a stage and everybody's playing a part. And when we wake up and say, okay, I don't like this role. I don't like this part that I'm playing. I'm going to step out of this and become a bigger person. Right then that's where our power lies. Right. Okay, do we have time to, to do Jose's? Oh, we don't have time before the break? <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. we're, we're getting close to the break. Okay, so we'll do Jose's um, on the outro. Okay. But um, I just think that your book and Napoleon Hill's book, if people mm -hmm. get the two of those as a package, mm -hmm. that everybody who's trying to figure out how can I get out of this mess, you know, that I find myself in and liberate myself mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, mm -hmm. the tools are all there. And I think that they need to start with Napoleon Hill's book and get yeah. the basics and then move on to yours mm -hmm. and then see where you're still being entrapped. Yeah. They, and do, how you, they do dovetail really well. Right? You know? And it's funny, uh, I wrote... It's kind of magical, game, right? Uh, it was finished before I read Napoleon. Right, I, I had asked you about yeah. it, and I was like, did you read that book? And you were no. like, no. And so I, it's the perfect compliment, actually. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. But it showed me that you literally had tapped into a stream yeah. of consciousness that, you know, its time had come, and it, it was time for the population to be ready to look at this. Yeah. And I'm not sure that that enough people are absolutely ready right now, but we got to keep beating the drum. That's it. You know, and, and yeah. wake up as many as we can. Yeah. You're listening to Divine Love Talk on CRN. I'm your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. We'll be back after commercial break, wrapping this up, and we'll be closing with Jose's... Um, actually his glyph for the day. You can find um, Will Snyder at lucifersgame.com mm -hmm. and his book is available on Amazon. I go out and get it. And Napoleon Hill's book, Outwitting the Devil. Right. Today. <laughs> Hotel, Mommy's Hawaiian Hotel.
Located in the heart of Maui's premier resorts, Kanapali Beach Hotel is officially recognized as Hawaii's most Hawaiian hotel and the number one best value in Hawaii. With a range of accommodations and affordable dining options, this is the ideal setting to turn Hawaiian dreams into lifelong memories. Live Hawaiian entertainment every evening, free year-round children's programs, weekly arts and crafts fairs, welcome breakfast, and departure kukui lei ceremonies add to the value. Swim in the whale-shaped pool, indulge in the fabulous spa and hotel salon. Enjoy Hawaiian hospitality at its best at the Ka'anapali Beach Hotel. Call 800-262-8450 or go to kbhmaui.com. That's kbhmaui.com. Aloha. Are you nearing eligibility for Medicare benefits? Then you know now is an important time in your life. Medicare benefits can be a complicated puzzle. You don't want to overpay for your Medicare coverage or get the wrong plan. Let Health Markets Insurance Agency help you. With one free phone call, a licensed insurance agent will help you select a Medicare plan that's right for you and your budget. If you're becoming eligible for Medicare, call today and learn how to get the most out of your benefits. 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Health Markets Insurance Agency is the DBA or assumed name of Insphere Insurance Solutions, Inc., which is an authorized insurance agency in all 50 states in the District of Columbia. Not all agents are licensed to sell all products. Service and product availability varies by state. Call 800-793-1960. 800-793-1960. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. They had obviously researched every place, not just given me names. Mm -hmm. They found me a place for which she could afford, and it was magnificent. We're now very confident that she's safe, and they just helped every step of the way, and I can't thank them enough. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, call a place for mom. This is a free service, and you can trust them to help you. If you're struggling to find reliable senior living information for your mom or dad, then call or go online to get the free help you need during this turbulent time. Call now, 800-471-5173, 800-471-5173. Okay, we're back, wrapping this up with Divine Love Talk. My guest is Will Snyder, and coming up right now is Jose Munoz, uh, timekeeper for the new Six Sun calendar. All right, hit it, Jose. Today, in November 2nd of 2015, we have the energy of the day through the Mayan ways of seeing cyclical time and we see that we have the day of Lahun Kame Simi which is the tenth day of our brothers and sisters the Kame Simi walking around the world. This is the day where we unite around the world the um, stone and crystal skull holders. We pray for peace and unity. And this is the day where we are grateful for all the transformations that we have been through in our lifetimes. Today we pray and we ask to unite in prayer so together we transform and take the necessary steps to bring this world to practice love, peace, and harmony around the world, starting with ourselves, of course. And that is the energy of the day. We also have a um, reading for Will, born on February 21st of 1952. We have that will has been born, conceived during the time where it's granted sacred authority. So the message for our 
Brother Will is exercise the authority you have been given. This means in the practical world that since your childhood you have been an authoritative child and sometimes that seems to be as arrogancy by your parents, your teachers, any other uh, corps of authority that we see in our lives, your authority is sacred. Therefore, the other authorities see you as competition. They see you as arrogancy, but we're here to, in a humble way, ask you to exercise your authority because it's, it's sacred. We also have here that you have the vision of the ego, the ability to sacrifice for others in perfect balance. Thank you for doing that work. A lot of these brothers and sisters sacrifice too much for others. We see here that you sacrifice in perfect balance, and so we thank you for that. And that is due to the fact that you already know everything, having that crocodile abilities in your path, in your past, present, and future. When you need advice from anybody, the only one that's going to give you the real advice, the real answer that you're seeking for, is the sacred fire. So thank you for doing your work in past, present, and future. Continue to do, exercise your authority. Aho, Bentiosh. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Oh, powerful. That's sacred authority. Sacred and authority. and in this book, you definitely stepped into it, and Jose tapped into um, how it was a threat to your parents and teachers. You could yeah. have known that. <laughs> I didn't talk <laughs> to him about it. That's powerful. Well, thank you for joining us today on Divine Love Talk. I'm your host, Dr. Parthenia Grant. Check us out on Facebook at Parthenia Onassis Grant. And Will Snyder, um, you can pick up his book at Amazon.com. Com, Lucifer's Game and at lucifersgame.com. Kim Michaels, you can find him at uh, Transcendence Toolbox. And Jose, you can reach him at unitylovepeace33 at gmail.com to get your own personal reading from Jose. And I highly recommend that for those of you who are trying to clear your path and move up on it. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with Kim Michaels' new uh, uh, new edition of Don't Drink Your Own Kool-Aid. Oh, cool. Thank you for coming. Which was most important because that was your opinion. Are you tired of hearing your favorite talk radio show sound like this? What if you could hear your favorite shows in crystal clear, high-definition digital sound? Well, with CRN Digital Talk Radio's six channels of high-definition radio, you can now hear all of your favorite hosts like you've never heard them before in CRN HD. The difference is amazing. Catch your favorite political hosts like Dennis Prager, Tom Hartman, Barry Farber, and so many more. Entertainment and lifestyle programming like the Robert Conrad.